Hey guys, on this video, I have a message. This message is for black Americans. This message could actually be for anybody. So anybody can watch this and probably learn some lessons or get some things out of this quick talk, but it's still directed at black Americans. And one of the reasons is because when it comes to money, as black Americans, we end up on the low end of the totem pole in a lot of areas regarding finance and personal finance and income and household income. So to break that down into a statistic, I'm going to give you just one statistic. For every one dollar that a white male makes in America, a black male is only going to make about 70 cents with the same education, with the same level of experience. It's going to make 70 cents to the white male's one dollar. And if you're a black woman, it's even less than that. So that one statistic alone should explain why we may want to have a little bit of a different approach to money than other folks in America. Because statistically, I can give you 20, 30 different statistics across the board where black Americans fall towards the bottom. So we've got to change that by doing a few things. And I know a lot of this is systemic racism. I totally understand that, but it's there, right? We may not be able to change the racism because that's not on black Americans to change. Right? The racism that exists that keeps black American males and black American females from earning much less than their counterparts, even though they have the same amount of education and they have the same amount of experience. We may not be able to affect or have an effect on the racism that exists and is systemically woven into all of it. But what we can do is maybe change some things from our end right? What can we do differently? And that's what I want to speak to on this video. Listen, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is widening every single day. And so if you don't want to get stuck and caught down here with the have-nots, there are some things that we have to start doing to think a little bit differently so we can maybe end up on the other half, right? And so what I want to do in this video is give you five quick things to maybe rethink the way we're thinking about money as black Americans that maybe will have an effect on helping us overcome some of these built-in systemic racial inequalities. So the first thing is this, guys. We have to understand that real wealth, real wealth is not flashy. So we have to stop believing that wealth equals flashy or flashy equals wealth or flash equals money because flash don't equal money. Flash equals flash. Real wealth is quiet. Most people with real wealth, they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be noticed. They don't want to be out on social media, flashing their money, showing their money, right? Showing what they have. Because people with real wealth, they don't usually take the energy it takes to try to show off their wealth. They don't care that anybody knows they are wealthy, real wealthy people. So we have to kind of shift our mind frame as black Americans and say, you know what? Let's not always go for the shiniest thing that's out there, right? We have too many people that get enamored by the look of being rich or the wealth look, right? The gold, the this, the flashy car, the flashy home, whatever it may be, the flashy clothes, the flashy accessories, purses, shoes, whatever. That is not wealth. That is not riches. That's just simply somebody who wants to be flashy, right? Too many of us are trying to look rich instead of trying to take the time and energy and work that it takes to be wealthy. Two different things, right? And we have to get out of this thinking that having stuff on the outside, what a person looks like and has on them on the outside means anything because it doesn't mean nothing at all. No, no, the fancy trips, the fancy designer stuff, clothes, no, let it go. In your brain, remember, that is not wealth, right? The world wants people to be focused on those non-constructive things, materialism and materialistic things, but it's just a show. It's just an outfit. It's just a purse. It's just a brand name of shoes. It's just a car. Don't focus on it because that's not wealth. Now, I'm not saying don't have fun. Don't buy nice things. That's fine. You can do that if you want to. No big deal. But just remember the concept that flashy has nothing to do with wealth, nothing to do with riches. Now, the second thing is this. We've got to be in the process or in the mind frame of creating and constructing and building and producing not the mind frame of a consumer, right? We were, a lot of us, me included, as a person that grew up poor, a black American who grew up poor in America, I was taught to consume, to 
consume things, right? But I was not taught to build. I was not taught to create. I was not taught to produce anything, but to consume everything. And that's a mind frame that is a poverty mind frame. We've got to be in the habit of being producers, wanting to be the one that creates, produces, sells, and makes the money. I don't care if it's growing food in your backyard, right? You grow food in your backyard and take it down to the market, the farmer's market or whatever it is on Saturday and sell your goods. Get in the habit of, of having something, creating, building, producing, and maybe selling it for a profit, right? Many of us were not conditioned that way. We were conditioned to, and especially in the latter years, right? The last 30, 40 years, to go buy everything we need from the store, right? Buy your food from the store, buy your clothes from the store, buy everything from a store and not produce any of the stuff ourselves. Just be a consumer and consume it all up. But I'm saying, let's be producers. Let's be creators. Ask yourself, what are you creating? What are you building right now? Specifically, something tangible, right? Not in your brain necessarily, but something tangible that you're building and creating right now as a black American. That's what you want, that's the mind frame you want to be in, right? How would you be able to sustain yourself? Can you build things? Can you fix things? Can you do things without the services of other people to be able to manage your life if you had to, to sustain yourself, right? What do you have? Do you have something that you sell that you can make money from? Do you have something that you actually build or create? Do you have a business or something that you're creating that you can earn a living from, right? That you're producing, right? Anything you're producing that you can pass on to your children, the next generation, and it can be here in 40, 50, 100 years. Maybe there's a piece of land that you're, that you're creating on, a building on, whatever it may be. What are you building? As black Americans, we have to be producers, not just consumers. Many of us were conditioned to wait, to sit, to wait on somebody else to do something, wait on the government, wait on the president, wait on the city council, wait on the alderman, wait on the grocery store, wait on, we were taught to wait on everybody else to do things for us. And I'm saying, let's not wait. Let's do things for ourselves. Let's produce and build and create for us, for ourselves. Don't wait on legislation and policy and a new president or a new Congress or a new this and a new that. Let's get busy right now building, being builders and producers, not just consumers. Now, number three is this. We've got to get our skills up, our individual skills up. Listen, if you want to be in poverty or you want to be poor from age zero to age 80, if you want to live your whole life in poverty, simply have low paying skills. You are guaranteeing yourself that you will be in poverty if you never get higher paying skills. We've got to get our skills up on an individual basis, not as a collective group, not as a community. I mean you, the person in the mirror, you have to raise your skills, become more valuable based on the skills you bring to the marketplace, to the job marketplace, to the business marketplace. You've got to have higher paying skills. You've got to work to be the best at who you are and what you do, right? You've got to have more value. You've got to create more value for yourself. And the way you do it is by increasing your skill set. Right? Maybe that is just building a business, whatever it may be. I'm not saying you have to go out and get a job. You can build a business. Owning and managing and creating a business, that's a skill set. Increase that skill set. If it's maybe you want to go in the medical field, go ahead and be a doctor. If you want to go into the educational field, go ahead and work to become a superintendent. Whatever it may be in your life, guys, you got to become better at it. And you got to raise your value by increasing your skills. Going ahead and getting that certification. Go ahead, take those classes, get that degree, whatever it may be. You got to increase your skills because that's one of the ways that you're going to be able to increase your income, right? I don't care if it's a trade, a plumber, a mechanic. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is for you. You know what it is. Look yourself in the mirror and say, what is it? How can I increase my skills so I can increase my income? Not worrying about the systemic racism that's out there. We know it's there, but we've got to look in the mirror on an individual basis and say, what can I do today, right now in my life to gain more income? And usually it means increasing your skills and getting higher paying skills. Now, the fourth thing is this, guys, we've got to get our money up. We have to say, how can we start investing, saving and investing our money to get our money up? 
I know it's harder. I know it's more difficult. I know we're starting right here and every and some other people are starting right here. But even if you start right here, you can still build your money, build your wealth, save money so you have an emergency fund, save money so you have 10 grand. 15 grand, six months worth of living expenses, a year's worth of living expenses. So you don't have to be down at the payday loan place getting a loan with 20% interest that you got to pay back. You don't want to do that. Have an emergency fund. So save your money. But in the same vein, in the same breath, invest your money. Invest for your future. Look out into the future, 5, 10, 20, 30 years. You're going to be there right? You, you may not, but let's consider that you're 25, 35 years old. And in 20 years, you're going to be here. You're going to be right here. And since you're going to be here, when you, when you're here in your fifties and sixties, you have to pay rent. You're going to have to buy food. You're going to have to pay for your utilities. You're going to have to pay for your medical expenses. You're going to have to pay for transportation. So guess what? You're only 30, 25, 30, 35 years old. Start saving and also start investing. So down the road, you have money. And you don't have to rely on other people. Let's get to that point where we say we are heavy into real estate, heavy into the stock market. We're investing our money for the future, right? And all that's going to require that we manage our money right now better. Now, again, the white male is making a dollar. The black male is making 70 cents. Same education, same experience. The black woman is making less than that. Because we make less, it means we have to be a little bit more diligent over our money. We got to be better stewards and managers over our money because we have less on them uh, in general. And because we have less, it means we got to take that extra step to be a little more detailed and careful about how we spend the less that we have. So it means you have to create a budget. You have to pay off debt, right? You have to, as I said before, create that emergency fund. You have to spend less than you make and you have to stop being a victim of your own bad behaviors with money. Don't blame your behaviors with money on racism, right? Listen, blame the person in the mirror. Take full accountability and responsibility for where you are with money, right? Set some money goals, make a money plan. Take advantage of this compound interest in the stock market. Participate in business building events or, 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 or conferences where you can learn to start and create your own business, whatever it may be, but start being diligent and disciplined with your money. We have to understand money at a different level. We got to understand the money at that 70 cent on the dollar level as opposed to the dollar level, because that's where a lot of us are. It's here, right? We make less. So we have to think accordingly. I didn't say think less. Don't think less of yourself. Don't think that you can't have everything you want to have, but you have to actually understand the facts and understand the position of where we are as black Americans in terms of finances. And we have to understand the money and use the money accordingly. And we have to understand the system that we're in, right? We aren't overthrowing capitalism, right? Whether you like capitalism or you don't like it, it's not going anywhere. So because it's not going anywhere, use it, use it to your advantage. Stop thinking that it's evil, it's sinful. There's a way to be moral, and have high values in the system of capitalism and use capitalism very, very well by using it to produce, create, build, right? You can do all that in capitalism with integrity. Just because you're utilizing the system of capitalism doesn't mean you've lost your, in, your integrity. You don't have any values. You do, and you can bring that to capitalism. There's individual black Americans that make plenty of money. We know that. But on a corporate level, because we make less, we need to be understanding how to best use money, how to manage money. Now that leaks over to number five. Number five is simply this. We've got to be responsible and accountable to the person in the mirror about our money. We have to hold ourselves accountable for what we're doing with money. Our financial condition on an individual basis is based on what we do. These are things that we have to come to grips with and understand as black Americans in America. We know there's a long history, hundreds of years of history of kind of boxing out black people when it comes to money in America. But guess what guys? We can do it now. We can start now. We can turn the tide and change it now. The person who takes responsibility has the power, and it is power, because it's the power to change. It's the power to do something different. It's the power to make a budget. It's the power to say, you know what? I'm going to change my behavior, and I'm going to focus on getting me an emergency fund. That's power with money. 
But in order to have that power, you got to believe that you're responsible. If you believe other people are responsible, you've just given away the power to those other people. And as black Americans, we can't afford, we can't afford to do that. No longer take the responsibility and the accountability for what happens with our money. And then we can actually change our situation with our money. I just wanted to drop this message. But as I said before, anybody can glean something from this quick talk. Now, hey, this channel is for everyone. But as a black person in America, guys, sometimes I have a message specifically to people that look like me. Hey, if you got anything at all out of this quick video, do me a favor, smash the like button, drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. Take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.